interesting. What's interesting? A diary of Theodore's spike. Theodore's Secret Diary. There was a scrapyard in some parts of America called Metal and Wood Company. It was for tugs who live here and do the work on taking in scrap metal. There was a man who ran it, and he was not the kind of person to meet with a sly face. Mr. Jokewood and he gives t orders to the tugs to take in the scrap objects. But the on he only has one tug which had given the other tug a hard time and that was Oliver, one worst tugboat bully that was sent home here. He works in the scrapyard and is the sort of tug that invites himself to the harbour where other yellow tugs named Hank, Fodak, George and Emily live. There was one tug he hated most, and that was Theodore. When his victim told the dispatcher how rough he had been, he sent him home, and he remembered George, who knew him very well. When they first met, on this day, Oliver was ordered from the manager, Joke Ward, to take some rubbish to the tip. He did so. As he took it, he suddenly caught sight of Theodore with the other tugs. What were they doing on the open water? Oliver wanted to know what they were saying, so very quietly, so as not to get noticed. He sneaked up a little to them. Did you hear? He heard Theodore. He bullied a while back that we're going to live in Tasman Sodor. Yes said the others. Oliver was surprised at what they were saying. Tasman Sodor? He wondered. What on earth is a place called Tasman Sodor? He listened again. Tasman Sodor? is going to be home to us and we can visit our first home when we ask our managers, he heard Hank say. We're going to learn about Australia and cannot have that bully Oliver around. Oliver suddenly realised they said his name and decided to finish a job. He was working and was heading for home. But all the same, his mind is on Tasman Sodor. What in the world 
Would a name come up to anyone that wouldn't believe it? He thought about telling Drog this, but he decided against this. No, I think it would be better if I get a chance of taking, talking to that yellow tug, he told himself. A smug face came on his face. Back in the open water, Theodore and his friends decided to have a travel work, so they split up. Theodore decided to go to the scrapyard. I'm to see what I can find in there, he thought. But when he went in it, he saw a white tug. He realized who it was. Oh no, it's Oliver, that bully tug. I troubled the dispatcher. I'd better be careful with him. Oliver looked up at him. Well, 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 he smirked. If it isn't Theodore, you live in the scrapyards? Of course I do. Now I'll give you a break if you tell me what were you saying to the other tugs about where you're moving to. Theodore suspected that he listened to what he was saying. He thought up a make-up word tonight. Are you talking about what I made up? I don't recall listening to what you were telling your friends. I was wanting to know the real name. Tasman Soto, but I don't think you get an explanation from me because I know nothing. As he thought it would happen, Oliver made an angry face. I'll put you on the pot so I can, you can help me with the scrap items as your punishment of not telling me what Tasman Sodor is like. Hmm. Theodore was taken to see the manager, Droke came up to them. Who's this tug, Oliver? Theodore, sir, I found him wandering in here. He told him about the affair when he mocked him. Droke seemed to make a strange smile. He looked at Theodore and said, So, young tug, what were you telling your friends about where you're going? You'll be the same as your tug, sir, not getting an answer from me. Droke went angry. Okay, that's it, buster. You'll be here for years to come with helping with the scrap work, taking in, taking in what scrap items that can be not used. Take him to his barge, Oliver. Oliver took Theodore to the other barge. You won't get scrapped when you do his work, said Oliver. What am I to do? asked Theodore. To find the scrap metal items. That's what you do. My mates have been scrapped when Joke was hired. I don't want to get scrapped either. 
Now get on with it. Theodore went to his barge, but Oliver left. He didn't want to take scrap metal items here. This was not a nice job. He had a plan. He remembered his travel job, so he decided to find some cars to save. Very quietly, he sneaked to a route. Behind large piles of scrap. Hmm. This is secret, so I might try to sneak off. His plan was to find two cars, then sneak away to, to his first harbour to find a workshop. But he needed them to not let Oliver see him. I'd like to help get cars restored, he whispered to himself. It's just like... It's just I need to do my vanishing tricks. Deep into the back of the large piles of scrap, he went, keeping out of sight. Oliver was busy taking in the scrap items. I wonder what Theodore's doing, he asked himself. He went towards a pile of scrap. Theodore was twisting and turning along a water path. He found when he heard Oliver coming. Uh oh I don't want him to know what I'm doing, he puffed. Maybe quickly he gathered speed, twisting round lidded corners and losing sight of Oliver. At last he found what he was looking for, a car coloured blue. It certainly needs restoring. I'll take it home with me. Once he got his prize loaded, he went off to get home, but he needed to avoid Oliver. He didn't want to be told to be told to leave his prize here. What he needed to do was radio him. It could work. Theodore to Oliver, can you read me? Loud and clear, little scum. I've gone to the smelting shed to take in the old blue car to get turned into spoons. I'll be right there. Over and out. Theodore carefully checked to see if Oliver was gone. He popped his head out, looking about if he didn't see him. And then he sneaked off out of the scrapyard and home with the car. Joke, who was in his office, was working. When he looked up, he saw Theodore was escaping. Oliver! He's escaping! Stop him! Huh? What? Oliver stopped. He turned round and headed to the office. But he couldn't see Theodore anywhere. <laughs> Bad luck, Theodore called. Ah, you've stolen our scrap item. I'll get you for this. Oliver steamed out of the scrapyard. He was so determined to keep him here. 
As a prisoner, Theodore came home to his harbour and began to find his path somewhere away from the open water. At last, home. But I mustn't let Oliver come in here. I'll have to lead him to somewhere else. And Tasman Sodor can't have him either. He delivered the car to the works and rested. He rested, waiting for it to get into its fine form while looking out for Oliver. Theodore's Secret Diary, Part 2 The Chase The car was restored and Theodore took it to its owner but there was no sign of who owned him. To his surprise, the car was alive. Thanks for getting me out of trouble, he said. I'll get back to Australia. Are you going there? Yes, I am, said Theodore. Well, keep yourself a secret from the tug, Oliver. He's the wrong one to be taken from. And the car left. Theodore decided to get ready to go to Tasman Sodor. He couldn't wait to meet up with his friends. Suddenly, he heard a tug's whistle. Uh-oh. It's all about coming in here. What can I do? Oliver came into the harbour looking about the place for Theodore. Where are you, little creep? he shouted. Theodore went out of the harbour towards the rocky area. He knew a perfect place to get rid of his bully. Very quickly, he moved off. Come and get me. You good for nothing junk, he called. Huh? Good for nothing junk? Why you? He started chasing Theodore. They went out of the harbour onto the open water. Theodore knew, knows the harbour, so he knew where to go. He swerved to the left into the gorge. You don't know this harbour. Bet you can't get me in here. And he went and vanished. Oliver stopped. When he saw his victim steam in the gorge. Hmm. No one can hide away from me that easily. He went in the gorge. But began to make a terrible mistake when he went in. Theodore was nowhere to be seen. He was in many routes that he couldn't know where to look. Dread! That tug is getting on my nerve! Theodore was in the deepest part of the gorge and he could hear Oliver calling his name. He still needed to get rid of him. But how? He looked for a place to hide. He saw a cave. He used it a lot of times when he was being good naughty. Perhaps he can lose him. This cave is good to hide, but I need more cover. Ah! Seaweed! Of course, it can help. A tilt of his whistle made him jump. He knew time was running out. Quickly, he took the seaweed. Making an outfit, 
he waited for his chest Oliver came in. He finally found his way into the deepest part of the gorge. He looked around to see if Fyodor was about, but he wasn't. All he could see was some pile of seaweed. Hello, he called. Hmm, I must have lost him. As he didn't see what as he didn't see the pile of seaweed moving, Fyodor was making a move. He quickly moved back the way he went to find the exit. Better get this off. Goodbye, Oliver. Hey! His shots echoed through the gorge. Oliver jumped. Is that you, Fyodor? Oh no, he's escaped! Fyodor's Secret Diary, Part 3 The Long Journey to Australia. Fyodor set off on his longest trip to Australia where he could find Tasman's Sodor to live in. But he looked about to see if Oliver was after him, but he couldn't see him. He knew he would go back to the scrapyard to get the manager, Joke Wood, so he and him could get after him. This trip is long, but I don't mind. I'd like to make a long trip. It is good to get my crapness away. He was soon making up for lost time. The lovely water was quiet, and he tooted to see if anyone was about. He saw a pod to rest in. His tank was running low, so he went to the shed. Had a drink but needed to rest before moving on again. Having a long trip is very hard, but a rest can do me good. He waited and waited till the numb feeling was gone. Off he went again. Back in the scrapyard, Oliver told Joke what had happened. Joke knew Theodore had tricked him and his tug again. So they began to find them out on the open water. We'll get him scrapped when we get him, he grunted. Back in the open water, Theodore was steaming on. He did enjoy a good rest. You're liking this trip, said his driver. I am, said Theodore. It's good to move to a new home. A travelling hour later, he came to Australia, and Theodore was pleased he came this far without mishap. But he needed to not let Oliver find him. I might radio the police so they can sort out Oliver and Rogue, Theodore, to Police station, can you read me? Police chief listening, what's the problem? It's my bully, Oliver, and Joke. They're after me. He told them they were going to scrap him, and the chief said, We'll sort them out. Report to Sydney Harbour. Theodore came to the answer port. But the police people were waiting. Who are you? 
I'm still born I come from America. We came to meet you so you could lead your enemies here. Let's see where they are. Hey, Kirk, there's the metal tag. Well, well, well. You've come to an end of your trip here. You got me, sir, but I haven't given up yet. I've got a few friends you'd like to meet. I don't see any friends. You're just by yourself. Let me tie you to Oliver. But just before he did, the lights flashed on him. He stopped dead. Theodore grabbed him with his rope, dragged him off Oliver into the water. Got you, little scum. Let him go, cried Oliver. You won't have him back dry. You'll have him back wet. You've got him drenched. The same thing will happen to you, too. Take this green waste. <laughs> Theodore gave his bully a nasty bath. Oh, cut this off, he cried. At last he gave up, so did joke. That's for bullying me back in my first home. The dispatcher brought you by mistake. Now who's bullied? The police took joke by the scruff and Theodore told Oliver to the workshop where he could get mended and sent to the museum. <laughs> Bad luck the second time. Theodore steamed off to find his new home. He felt very happy to live in peace. No more enemies to stop me. <laughs> Theodore's Secret Diary, Part 4 Theodore's First Day Work and meeting up with his friends. Theodore was exploring his new home. He was glad to live in Tasman Soto. He could be wanting to tell his tale to his friends. His bully, Oliver, was sentenced to the museum. Till 2,000 years he would be sent to another museum where he would never work again. Joke was sick in jail and had died of a heart attack. Since he was arrested, Theodore, having explored his new home, decided to have his tale kept a secret. It will have to be shared with his friends and new friends. They will meet one day. He wrote his fourth story in his diary, and when finished, he saw his friends who found him. Fancy meeting you here. Hello, Theodore. I thought I would tell you my tale. It needs to be safe with us and you friends. We shall make and ten cents along with sunshine too. How was your trip? Harbour boy, Hank, till I made it good with helping a car and made an enemy of Oliver and Rogue. They came after me. When I came here, I had to trick them by following me to Sydney where the police I called would capture them. You called them yourself? Yes, I did, Fogdag. And now he's taken to jail and Oliver's been sentenced to the museum until 2000. This diary, which I happen to have,
is our secret, which must be hidden. We'll need someone who can help with hiding it. As we met his only engine that can help us, he knows where to hide it. <sighs> they heard a whistle that broke the quiet dark part. They saw an engine steam into sight. It was Percy who was heading for home. Hello, you lot. Nice to have you here. Hello, Percy. I know you come. I knew you'd come. We have this diary you need to hide. Oh, yes. That book, I'll hide it in Twilight's house. You didn't tell the police about it. Oh, I didn't tell them. Just my name. And it's on my deck. I took it out to show my friends. Let's get this plot finished. Okay. Leave it here then. Thank you. Twilight's house. Twilight is a nice pony. You might meet her one day and have a date. It gets your troubles faded. Thank you. You can choose friends, not families. That's some tale, Percy. Yes, Twilight. You've kept the book a secret for years, and Theodore wants you to give it to Celestia so she can put it in the bowl of memories. Yeah. You're a kind princess pony that gives us a body of promising us hope or grow strong. Thanks, Theodore. It's sweet of you to say that. Oh, it's gone. I best get to bed. Thomas's diary. Hmm. Thomas's Diary, Part 1 Thomas's move job and getting stuck in a shed he used to live in. Twilight Sparkle was reading Thomas his long-lost diary he made. This tale is when you were... This tale is about you that came here in 2006, Thomas. Shall I read it? Yes, then we best put it away where you found it. It's best it should be given to Canterac Castle so it can be put in the 
Bone of memories. I'm glad my trouble with Lika over. Okay. Here it goes like this. It was a fine day in the year 2002. The perfect day for Thomas to move to Tasman Sodor. He was to go through England to get there. Before he did, he decided to see how much the other railway has changed. He knew his brothers didn't stay alive and, well, it was taking... It wasn't taking a good advice word. Steam and diesels have to work together. We might make a trip work here before we go, Thomas, said his driver. But let's, let's rest in that shed you used to live in. It's been empty for years. Well, I hope any engine on steam or diesel, I don't know, can get interested in me, said Thomas. <clears throat> he found a shed that was in an abandoned railway. The place had been empty for years since he escaped the other railway. Thomas was half pleased to see his shed. It was the only place to live in. His life was good in the old days, but in new days his railway had been changed. He parked in the shed. His driver and fireman stayed in his cab after they closed the doors. Night came, and Thomas slept, but he felt unsettled. He was in the other railway, and he has to not get caught by an engine he doesn't know. Things have changed since I escaped, and my brothers have died, he thought. I do so not like the way the other railway behaves. Well, we had to stay here for the night, said the driver, so you can get strong engines and keep moving. We shan't be, said the fireman. I think Thomas is right. Things have changed since we left. My word, the noise of diesels are not a friendly sign, Thomas. Suddenly it caught a noise of some engines. The driver got down and sneaked up to the door. When he opened it, he saw the diesel that was lurking in the abandoned railway. Uh-oh, it looks like we're going to be stuck. There's a diesel we don't know, and it's in where we are. Oh dear, we best keep quiet so he can't see us. Quick, block the windows with some paint. So they did. And the waiting game began. Thomas's Diary, Part 2 Leak. Morning came as Thomas woke up. His crew checked to see if the coast was clear. They got his fire lit and then they explored the abandoned railway. Thomas had to do the trip plot. He found some trucks that were left in a siding, so he quickly took them.
He came to a cave mine where he used to do the coal work. It was not working, but the place was still open. He collected some coal and steamed off to make his trip to Tasman Sodor. He was glad to get out of the shed to stretch his wheels until out of the corner of his eye he saw the notion his driver saw yesterday morning. He came up to Thomas. He had a rather sly face and his eyelids were sort of half open and he made a rather evil grin. Hello, mate, he said. I'm Leek and you must be the tankard and I haven't seen for years since I got banished to this abandoned railway. He paused when he saw the truck of with the other, then said, I'll give you a break if you tell me where you're going with the trucks of coal. Thomas knew Leek was wanting to know where he was moving. If he told him his new place, it would get invaded from him, so he had to think up a way to get rid of him. I'm taking these trucks to the docks. The big ships need coal. Nick laughed meanly. <laughs> That's not what you're telling me. Come on, tell me where you're moving to. Thomas squished steam at the bullet diesel. Nick got taken by surprise. What the? I can't see! Thomas steamed off out of the abandoned railway before Leek could notice. When the steam fog faded, he saw his victim had gone. Little brat! He shouted angrily. Just wait till I get my strength on him. I want to get him melted in. The smelter shed. So he gave chase. Thomas was chuffing in the countryside, away from the other railway. He went full towards the forest. Suddenly, he heard Lee calling his name. Thomas knew he had to let him go to a wrong place. The woods was his route to Tasman Sodor. We can't let him chase us to Tasman Sodor, driver. We must lure him to a wrong place. No need, Thomas. We'll drop the truck with the other. Nico crashed it. Good thinking. Quickly, he dropped the truck of coal with the other truck of coal. They went running loose. There was a crash. And then he stopped to have a surprise. He saw his enemy crash on the pile which was made from the crash. Curse you little brat! You will be needed till 26, lad. Thomas steamed on towards the woods and vanished. Leek could never get him. <laughs>
Thomas's new life starting after he finds Percy. Thomas arrived in Greendale at 3 p.m. He began exploring it before he would find Percy. He met the Fat Controller who was waiting first. Hello Thomas, where have you been? I've been almost dragged from an engine leak, sir, and I'm just exploring my new home surroundings to find Percy. I've got something to do which is important. Okay then, you best do your first day's work. He found Percy, who was at the windmill site. Hello, Thomas. What took you so long? I got almost dragged from Leek. An engine I happened to meet and stopped him by dropping some coal. Leek? The engine I met first? Yeah, and I got this diary too to hide. Do you think I should hide it? In where? Do you think I should hide it in where we live? Yes, it's best we give it to a pony named Twilight Sparkle. I met her a long time ago and told her one day we might need her help when she advanced enough. Oh, I've never met her for years, but she might be of a good friend to us. Thomas hit the book in the shed and began to do his first day's work, which was taking the coach's job. He took, sorting them for the big engines. and he brought himself his very own branch line. He enjoys it and thinks it's a great life to live on until he suddenly saw an engine that came into sight. At first Thomas thought it was diesel but he realized who it was.
it was leak. The engine who was visiting for revenge. It's time you shall pay the price of why you stopped me from chasing you here, engine. It's time to take you back to England till the smelters. Oh, please, enough of why you want me melted. You know you're not allowed here. The fat controller wouldn't let you. I don't think he's got anything to say about this. Now shut up and let me take you back to England. Oh, no, you don't. Leek. Leek suddenly had a surprise. He saw who was behind him. The Fat Controller. Who was staring at him. Persis told Thomas about you. And he told me too. I saw you in my car and realized you were doing criminal work. You don't scare me off, Fatty. I wanted him scrapped because I didn't tell. He didn't tell me where he was living. Not scare you off, hey? Well, listen to what I'm telling you. When I went through the other railway, I saw you banished in that abandoned railway. I think your life will be sentenced to the museum, but first, your crew. Who drove you? The two men stepped out. I might have known you two naughty boys have brought him after you were expelled. Stephen, that man that remembers us that we nearly bullied you, told our teacher that we were doing the right thing and we were banished to wherever country we'd get dumped in. We've been tricked. That's right, and you were banished to jail and were dumped in England till you find an engine that is the same as you. Now we got you. You'll be sentenced to jail till 2039. The teenage crooks were taken in Branch 9 Station, Police Station. And Thomas took Nick to a ship to take him to the UK Museum, where he would be in display, but will be forgotten. So oh, that was that. Nick was in the museum till he was needed. Thomas is safe, but he needed the diary to be forgotten. That's how you need me to get rid of it, Thomas. I'll descend it to Canterlot Castle to the bowl of memories. Thanks, Tyrod. I knew you'd be of help. Good night. And then... Oops. 
so sweet too. Let's meet Billy. We haven't seen him for a while. I wonder if I can date him. <laughs> Thank you. 
was a tough one. We visited on the railways without telling when we do up a club called Good Life Club. One Billy's, Digby's, Jack's and Smelly's jobs. One of Billy's, Digby's, Jack's and Smelly's jobs were talking about what would life have when every new year comes about their managers find, finding out. Is it on the day when your railway closed? Oh yes. And we couldn't live on in railways that get shut down. We moved every year between 1924 to the 80s. We were managing fine till we were found again and were on the run. We had one very smart way of letting them find us the hard way. We split up, and we did. The police were always after us, when Luna restored us with magic. I might tell you what happened to me when we met again before you came to live here.
Monday, I was in the forest railway resting when I saw two same engines and a third. They were glad to see me. Hello, you see, said me. How is your risk in life getting here? Tough, Billy, said Jack. We were restored from Luna, who found us in the scrapyards, after we were given to the cold, damp sidings. Golly, we did wait on a cold, yeah, wait. It was all Dr. Baron Beeching's fault. Let me tie us to it. Did you check him by living in every empty railway? Oh yes, and we got taken by, we got taken by surprise to see we had no one driving us. I shook him out of my cab. The Fulbro got him sore as we escaped to find you. Did he tell the police to come after you? Yes, he did. When he went too far, now we're together again in Tasmania. We can do the work by orders of our new controller. A good one. Percy was silent. Did the police gave up hunting you? He asked. Oh yes, and Dr. Beeching was so upset he just blamed himself. He doesn't believe in magic when we tricked him to look in one of our cabs. We're glad to live here and we've done many jobs we like doing without un uneducated managers. Percy could only agree.
of my little pony, Friendship is Magic. I present to you this magazine. Now there's something interesting I've been doing with it. Uh, yes, this. Sending Spike and his friends some letters. I've given a drawing about them to him, about what, what I like. I've given Spike and Twilight a picture of themselves with we George Ward, Twilight with the hills with Postman Pat Van, Pinky Pie with Chocolate Slice, Fluttershy meeting with Australian animals, Rabbit is just a gem, Rainbow Dash, uh, um, uh, <coughs> right. Yes, a picture of her with Pineapple Pete. Um, uh, Applejack in Margaret Farm Hills. Um, yeah, that's what I could uh, think to give to these partners. There's a picture of Twilight again with Parsley the Lion. I have a very friendly lion called Parsley. I am always very glad to see you, eh? But please don't try to speak to me too harshly, because I'm not particularly brave. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what they would like. So, if you ever come across one of these, you can give Spike at the My Little Pony Post Signature Publishing Limited. The Stables, Pepper Harrow Park, and Argonne Ming, Sharpie G U H six B Q. Or you can do the email. My little pony magazine signature P L dot Calm dot United Kingdom. Yeah, it's lovely, this magazine. No, I've already got a scooter little figurine. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, the one on YouTube. Just a little ad to tell you about this interesting monster. Brutal monster, that is. It's called the Tyrannosaurus Rex, king of the dinosaurs, and he eats meat. And he he was in the late Cretaceous period when things were choking to death. Earth things were choking to death and a meteorite was about to hit Earth to wipe out every prehistoric life. How they disappear? Well, Nobody knows how they disappear, except when you find a few bones 
you would send them to the museum. <coughs> Take a look at the heads. They're so tiny. And the big weapon is the mouth. It can crunch in its skeleton in flats. But there's one thing that dinosaurs can't eat. Germs. Another thing that they can't eat. You already know they can't eat plant things like fruits. In case you're wondering why am I making this little ad? Well, to be quite honest and truthful, this ad is about the land with time. Starving little foot and long neck. Diplodocus or Brontosaurus and Cerber, a three horn. You'll be seeing them with many adventures. There's even a little Tyrannosaurus Rex named Chomper. And another dinosaur named Ducky. Mm. You'll be seeing the four of those guys coming soon to YouTube. Oh, wow! This one's very fierce. Look at all the spines. Lots of horns. Ugh. They look dangerous. I wouldn't like to touch them. Got over the skin they have, the way a dinosaur's growing, and the way a form is formed. Mm, look at its eyes. They're a nasty sight to see. It's all right, it's just a model. It's been made to be put in the museum display. I'll just put that away, ready to be used for land with time. I'm glad there's no other Tyrannosaurus Rex. They um, call it a sharp tooth. We don't call it a sharp tooth. We call it the first name. A new history my friend would like to see. Spike, what do you think you're doing? An ad, Twilight, doing an ad, telling you, Chub, that our maker's making land with time, which is coming soon. Oh, that's what you were doing. I heard you were doing some talk about the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Styracosaurus. That's my thing to do. I was only wanting to study dinosaurs. I haven't done them for years. I know, Spike. Because you were wanting to study them since we moved to Ponyville. You were doing that thing when I just came home. It's that raw thing. That's what I just did in the beginning of the ad. Yeah. I thought so. Hmm. And you better give our maker back his camera. The video, his camera. 
I um, asked him to borrow it so I could do an ad. Just a helpful idea. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, best. It's what we're doing. 